I mean, you can get it in your cars covered in, it's like sooty stuff or whatever, I don't know what it is, but you definitely, I mean, I've had my dog turn green. Há quatro anos atrás, a enchente que se passava por, por aqui. Eles poluem lá no norte e nós aqui do sul que somos obrigados a a despoluir, entendeu? Porque aqui tem mais áreas verdes. Qual é o nome do senhor? José Alcino da Fonseca. É, eu gostaria de saber por que, que o senhor aceitou o convite, por que, que o senhor está aqui? Precisamos de água e está faltando. Meu nome é José Vicente Pinto da Fonseca. Estou aqui né, em nome da minha comunidade. É Carlos Maurício. Aí eu vim para apresentar ou mostrar algum problema que nós estamos sentindo com o reflorestamento. Meu nome é Grace. Para mostrar para as pessoas os problemas que eu aprendi a conhecer é, relativos à monocultura de eucalipto. Sinara de Fátima Almeida Tomás. A gente fortaleceu o nosso grupo, mostrar para o lado de lá o que, que realmente eles estão fazendo, entendeu? Como que eles estão financiando isso aqui. I'll come and see what happens, what's happening with BP over in Brazil. Because mm -hmm. I heard it's about, about uh, what BP are doing. And, That's right. and do you know anything about Brazil? Does it stand? Nothing at all. Nothing. And talk about yourself, why have you came here today? Well, I've just, I've just basically come to find out, just like my friend. Right. She asked me to come down, I'm just interested to find out what they're, what they're getting up to. Good. I've been living under it for years. It's, mm -hmm. it's interesting to find out what they're doing elsewhere. Right. And do you know anything about Brazil? Not apart from the football, no. That's great. <laughs> Thanks very much. The film that you're about to see is going to be shown in Brazil to a, a wider community than the people that made it. And what we're hoping to do is to send some responses quickly. So like, we're hoping to make some video letters to make the equivalent of this in Brazil. Nosso distrito chama São José do Buriti. E essa palmeira bonita, só que ela só brota onde brota água. E o que está que acontecendo com o problema da plantar? A plantar está aqui no município há quatro anos somente. E só dentro das áreas dela já morreram seis nascentes. 
Agora é uma falta de respeito que as pessoas próximas falaram que pescavam aqui. Você pode ver que realmente era, uma, era um riacho caudaloso. E hoje não tem uma gota d'água numa época dessa de chuva. Não tem uma gota de água. O município tem um... São 123 mil hectares e sendo que um terço do município já é ocupado por, pela monocultura do eucalipto. É, e são várias empresas, né, dentre elas a Plantar, que é uma empresa certificada. Ela tem as suas plantações certificadas pelo FSC, que tem o selo verde. É, com isso, né, com esse selo verde, ela, ela tem como receber financiamento do Banco Mundial. E essa empresa, ela pretende comprar mais áreas aqui, porque por causa do mercado mundial de carbono, ela precisa é, plantar mais 23.100 hectares, que é o projeto dela. O protocolo de Kyoto é, é um acordo firmado entre 141 países industrializados que fizeram um acordo de diminuir as emissões de poluentes na atmosfera. Eles poluem lá no norte, e nós aqui do sul que somos obrigados a, a despoluir, entendeu? Porque aqui tem mais áreas verdes, então eles investem em projetos né? e compram créditos de carbono. Nesse jogo de compra de, de carbono, de créditos de carbono, existe um fator que o Banco Mundial desconhece, que são os problemas, os problemas causados pela monocultura de eucalipto aqui na região e que a gente tenta de todas as formas estar tá falando, tá alertando, só que as pessoas não escutam. E mesmo assim a empresa ainda ganha dinheiro para fazer esse tipo de coisa, para estar tá destruindo a nossa comunidade, para estar tá destruindo os moradores locais, para estar tá destruindo a fauna, por estar tá destruindo a flora e ninguém faz nada. Não é falta de conhecimento dos órgãos públicos, dos órgãos responsáveis, o IEF, o IBAMA, e todo mundo é conivente, a prefeitura, a Câmara Municipal, os órgãos, o FSC, todo mundo é conivente, a Assembleia Legislativa, o Estado, o município, todo mundo é conivente com os problemas, todo mundo sabe, mas o poderio econômico é uma coisa muito séria. Essa aliança do poder público com a, com a empresa é uma coisa muito séria, porque é, antes a gente tinha o apoio das pessoas, dos impactados. Mas agora a gente não tem mais porque é, a empresa, o poderio dela em cima das pessoas é uma coisa impressionante. É, nós mesmo tivemos visitando algumas comunidades que são impactadas, são, são pessoas que têm problema, mas a empresa deu um jeitinho de calar as pessoas. Eles colocaram poços artesianos, né? É, a pessoa agora está com medo de falar e perder a água que eles colocaram dentro da casa deles. E com isso, é, para nós que estamos lutando, é, é, é difícil, porque nós estamos praticamente lutando sozinhos. Depois que a gente começou a denunciar os problemas que estavam acontecendo, a empresa começou a contratar todas as pessoas que moram ao redor dela, ao redor das terras da empresa, para trabalhar na empresa. Então, dessa forma, calou a boca das pessoas, que agora, por um salário mínimo, já não falam mais o que realmente acontece que eu estava induzindo eles a fazer denúncia em relação à empresa. E que era bom também que eu me calasse, porque senão poderia sobrar para mim. Eles ameaçaram até de que eu me atropelar se isso continuasse acontecendo. Como que eles podem pensar que é uma, uma justificativa para os problemas ambientais de lá, sendo que está prejudicando o lado de cá? Pau-terra. Ah, pau-terra. Pau-terra. Entendi pau-terra. Pau-terra, essa espinhenta aqui é um remédio, que se fala a lobeira, a brinjela, eles tiram o leite da, da fruta dele para poder curar a diabetes. Não dá que as perebas de furum que não quer sarar, pode tomar também, que a limpa tudo. Sai tudo na urina, vai urinando e sai a rima toda na urina. Chama, chama, ela, ela chama mãe de uquinha do campo, né? É. Própria gripe e pneumonia, né? Essa erva ali. Morre de cicopida, né? Essa árvore de primeiro país. Essa é o bug. A manopausa de dona. A 
abaixo de Deus o banho da ilha, isso é, o, é a penicilina. Ela fez banho para queimadura no corpo do meu filho. O mato é cheio da riqueza, né? Nós não sabemos... Preservar, né? É, preservar aquilo, qual é o que vão, né? E sem ter água, até eles morreram esse ano. Morreram muito. Morreram bastante dos nossos remédios caseiros. Tem que procurar o do cerrado, do mato. O negócio é isso. Compro o engenheiro lá, o ZF lá, com o dinheirão. Eles multam, mexem, viram, mas arranca tudo, arranca tudo, arranca tudo, arranca tudo. Esse mundo de eucalipto, cadê o pau que tem aí? Essa aqui é a margem de Riacho Fundo. E eu moro aqui a 100 metros da margem do Riacho Fundo. E o nosso amigo ali, o Carlão, mora a 100 metros. O que nos separa é só o córrego do Riacho Fundo. Bom, do lado de lá do Riacho Fundo, do lado de lá do córrego, mora o Jota. E do lado de cá, moro eu a quase 200 metros. Eu vou fumar você. Aqui, ó. Aí, aí sim, aí aguenta, né? Aguenta. Balança aí, ó. Tá estralando. Se balançar, você quebra, mas não passa. É. Há quatro anos atrás, a enchente que eu passava por, por aqui. Depois que entrou a plantar, fez as áreas de contenção. Mal, mal, passa naquelas pedras lá embaixo, lá. O coco reduziu muito o volume de água. Isso deixando todos que moram na margem do, do riacho em dificuldade de água. Esses estão no sítio de propriedade de Carlos Maurício, morador da comunidade do Faleira. Nós estamos na fábrica de cachaça do senhor Carlos Maurício. É, o que faz, o que faz é, controlar a renda da família todo ano por falta de água que foi, que foi prejudicado, ao ser prejudicado, o nosso corpo foi prejudicado pelo reflorestamento, da plantar reflorestamento. Com isso veio falta água e diminui a produção até das micros indústrias. E aqui que precisa de água? Aqui aonde precisa funcionar com a água dia e noite. Enquanto a falta d'água, nós sofremos uma grande queda na produção da cachaça. Como é que é o nome da senhora? Irene. Faz muito tempo que a senhora mora aqui nessa propriedade? Tem 55 anos que eu moro aqui. Menos, sem exagero. <risos> Tem filhos? Tem. Quantos filhos? Dois. E produção de leite para a senhora fazer aqui tem quantos anos? Tem dez, dez anos hum. que eu faço queijo. A senhora nunca teve problema de água aí na propriedade? Tem. A partir de quando a senhora vem tendo problema? A partir de 2001. Que a água vem faltando. Pois aí, aí mudou muito na vida de senhora. Como é que a senhora tem resolvido esse problema da falta de água? Tem resolvido. É arrumando a cisterna. Lavo roupa fora lá na represa. Busco água na represa. Com a carroça de cavalo. Essa... E vai reduzindo o gasto dentro de casa. Pois é, mas a senhora, a senhora acredita que uh, essa, essa falta de água que vem tendo é proveniente de que na região? Plantio de eucalipto. Hum. Que nunca faltou, nunca secou. Corgo, a cisterna tem 50 anos, nunca secou, 55. Nunca secou a cisterna. E agora tem secado. Esperamos com isso consciência, a consciência humana 
de todas as partes do mundo que venha nos ajudar e, e, e conscientizar eles do mal que faz matar os nascentes. My name is Carol, and uh, I live in Greensboro. Uh, the film, I enjoyed the film. I didn't realise just the scale of what they're getting up to. Um, I mean, I live in Grangemouth and I have most of my life. And it's like living under an umbrella of pollution. You don't know what's, what you're going to get from one day to the next. I mean, you can go out and your car's covered in it's like sooty stuff or whatever, I don't know what it is, but you definitely, I mean, I've had my dog turn green, so you just never know what's going to happen here. And I feel for them, because I know what we go through. Hi, um, I'm Les Wallace, and I come from the local area. It was very interesting to see that this initiative, which has been called an environmental initiative, and it isn't, is being exploited. And I'm very angry at what's happening, that it actually has a connection in my local area with uh, a major company, with BP. I was just say, sorry, it's not our fault, it's BP Grangemouth. It's not people of Grangemouth or Falkirk, it's BP Grangemouth. I was quite shocked when I seen the video. We see our side to their side, we think we're quite bad. And then we see their side, I thought, my God, it's actually not just as bad as what we think we are. Yeah. But at the same time, we have smells. You know, smell doesn't arrive through nothing. It's got to have something in the smell, and we're breathing it in deep into our chests and it's going through our pores and our children and our grandchildren are going up in this mucky environment and it's really not acceptable. In Greensway we seem to be getting a lot of ill health. A lot of different things coming up now that's never come up for years. I quite believe that the health problem is caused by something in the air. That we think of eucalyptus plants as sort of a nice bushy things in Australia, koala bears, but when you actually see it in reality, when you actually see the film, you think, my God, these huge big towering trees, I and mean, you must imagine the size of the roots. You can see how and why it's soaking all the water up. How are they going to find out what nature does if nature's gone? Because once it's gone, it's gone. It kind of bring it back. It brought home to us a lot, of, a lot of things tonight, didn't it? Yep. This is a, a newcomer coming into Grangemouth in the last four years and a, a person that's been born and bred in the area. So it's coming for two sides. You mean older? Yes, politely. Right. <laughs> Experienced. <laughs> As well as spreading the message of what's happening in Brazil, we've used it to get people to, to make their response and I think that's the, like the important bit as well, so encouraging people here to tell their story eh, so that there's, we're sharing rather than taking people's stories, we're sort of going to be sharing our stories. Initially the Hillfoots, I now live next to the BP plant in Grangemouth. Hi, can you tell me your name please? Hello, my name is Jasmine. And can you tell me if you get any experience with, cam with the cameras? No, no experience whatsoever. The only experience I've had is with these guys here in the weekend training. Hello, uh, could I have your name please? Hi, I'm Norman. Uh, hello Norman. I used to be on a, a media studies course where we use cameras to make pop videos just to, to have some fun. Uh, more recently, I've had some experience of using the, the camera that you've got in your hand right now. Hi, can you tell me your name, please? Hi, it's uh, Les Wallace. I did a media course as well uh, about 20 years ago, but it was very basic and uh, it was a very old fashioned camera now. Can you tell me your name? Carol. We made a film a few years ago for a competition, filming my children <laughs> with their home one, <laughs> but that's about it.
chiedono non mi potete chiedere di fare le regole, gli interessano che abbiamo fatto la volta di crisi su questo, ma questo è il mio, è il mio, è il mio, è il mio, è il mio. My name is Norman Phillip and I was brought up in the town of Grangemouth. The town of Grangemouth is located in central Scotland on the coast of the River Forth. With a population of 18,000, half the town is encircled by industry in close proximity to where the residents live. Over the past 40 years, the town has expanded at the same time as the petrol industry itself and Grangemouth now has 10 major petrochemical companies surrounding the town but the industry that Grangemouth is most associated with is BP Grangemouth, the biggest oil refinery in Scotland. The purpose of this film is to show what local residents feel about having oil industry as their neighbour. The people who have made this film have been inspired by watching the film made in Brazil by local residents whose lives have been affected by eucalyptus plantations. The connection to Grangemouth is that companies like BP buy carbon credits from the World Bank, which enables them to continue to pollute in towns like Grangemouth. I can remember living in a flat in Grangemouth, which my bedroom was on the fourth floor of the, the flat. My father worked in BP, just like most of the parents of my friends in school. I can remember at nights when my dad was working, often night shift, hearing strange noises and actually wondering, was my dad going to be okay? Was he having to save BP? To make this film, I went back to where I was brought up and, and went back to that flat. And he was surprised that round about, all the other flats were getting knocked down. In some way, that's a metaphor for the town. BP is selling off now, and there's a concern of what's going to happen to Grangemouth, what's going to happen to the local economy. My concern is who will clean up the industrial wasteland that will be left. To me, the, the next generation are the people that are going to have the concern. Who will look after the town? Well, I came to Grangemouth in 1956 because my husband got sent here to work in the BP offices and I've been here ever since, which is nearly 50 years. Uh, Grangemouth has grown quite a lot and uh, BP is the main, well, it was the main employer of the area. Well, it's a nice street. But sometimes it can be noisy with the BP just living over there. They're quite often burning off excess gases in the hydro cracker at night, often at one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. And if you turn up here and look at the docks, quite often there's oil tankers going up and down the street three, four in the morning. I'm used to it because I live here, but visitors, they can't sleep with the noise. Could you tell us about the first night that you came here? Well, the first night I didn't think I would sleep because of the noise that came from the BP. I uh, have worked, lived in the country and didn't hear any noises like that. But now, I don't even hear the noises. Hi there. I live just along the road from the BP. Um, I would say it's rather smelly at times, noisy, and it blocks out a lot of the natural starlight with all the lights in the sky. And when I'm driving, it's got quite a pungent sulfur smell tonight. That's a bit more though, isn't it? So if you have a party in Grangemouth near the BP, you don't, <laughs> you don't have to hire disco lights. They're all there. Um, my name's Fiona. I've been here for four and a half years approximately. And I was popped into Grangemouth through no choice of my own. And uh, I do have mental health problems, i.e. depression and anxiety. But breathing in all the smells, um, from a BP plant and it is literally on my doorstep and the next block to me there's a road 
and that is how close it is. And the only thing we actually did get from the BP plan is this here, emergency instructions. But it's actually, although it's comforting, it's quite frightening to think, oh my God, if this goes, I'm going to go. Because if it goes, and it's so, it looks so open that there's no big barriers, there's no big walls, there's no big anything. You think, my God, terrorists could get here. They could throw a bomb over there and just blow the whole damn thing up and we go with it. Um, we would, I mean, so basically, if that was the case, this would be absolutely useless. It would get blown into the sky with us. For me personally, I can't stand uh, noises and smells and uh, anything outside. Is, even a cup of coffee outside can make me feel sick. And um, I like to be in a flat where it's quiet. Things can go at my pace. And it's quiet and relaxed and you can do your thinking and be prepared to go outside and face the world and face whatever the things has got to throw at you. Hundreds of ornaments that even behind you, there's heaps of them. You'd never know as an ornament collector, would you? <laughs> family don't actually like me living here. They don't want to put themselves or their children, my grandchildren, in this breathing, breathing area. Um, I really can't blame them. So I actually feel quite isolated and cut off from my family. They can't just come down for a visit. I was sitting here one night in a bad state of depression at two o'clock in the morning and uh, feeling very ill, very paranoid and no one to speak to. And the next time some mighty flare came up and I thought, what the hell is that? Thinking Grangemouth is going to blow up because you hear all these stories. Everyone laughs, oh, the plant's going to blow up. And I truly believed that night it was going to blow up and I was sitting over here with a telephone in my hand, ready to phone my boys to say, Mum's getting blown up, I'll see you in heaven. Well, I'm inside the flat, it doesn't bother me. But when I go outside the door, it brings it back to reality. That it's just there. As I'm going down each step, I think I'm getting a bit closer to it. And once you're outside, especially if the wind's blowing in my direction and you can smell it, you think, oh God. Then it goes again and it's, it's back in your face again. But when you're in here, the window's closed, um, you sort of you try and shut it out of your mind. You would drive yourself nuts. You really would drive yourself nuts. You've got to try and get on the best you can. Um, but the minute you go down the stairs, you, you sort of walk into it, you think, oh, back out to reality again, back out to the smelly bit, back out to all the noise, traffic, pollution. You're stuck with it. This is Skin Flats. It's at the upper end of the fourth estuary, again near Grangemouth. Uh, it's probably one of the best places on the full estuary for wildlife. It's a very important site for birds, birds and migration paths and for even for breeding birds here. I grew up as a child near here and I was very fortunate that I was encouraged by my parents to take an interest in wildlife and that's probably why I didn't go into vandalism. Uh, but unfortunately it was because of my parents' encouragement, it wasn't because sites like this were promoted to the local population. This is something that's got tremendous educational potential, it's got a lot of cultural significance, but nobody knows anything about it, it's not promoted. And uh, as you can see, it's a lovely day, it's a nice sunny Sunday and there's no one here just goes to show how rich this estuary is when you can lift a bit of piece of seaweed and you get something like all those sand hoppers living underneath it. It just seems shows how it might not look that dramatic but how important and uh, productive it is. Well hello, welcome to our video diary. This is you're going to be following me and my family and friends about today, uh, seeing what we get up to and uh, finding out about things about us about how we, the BP affects our lives, everyday lives. Uh, I've got six children, um, Emma, Sean, Scott, Michael, Alan and David. Uh, Alan and David are the twins, they've got asthma. Oh. There's a very high asthma rate in Grangemouth. Bye! I used to work in the, the BP, you said. Was that on the shutdowns or was it...? Aye. I used to, I've been in the hydro cracker, the KG, various other bits of the place. That's why they bring in the guys for all the various English towns. Kind of like they've not got a life here, they're just living in digs, they go to the BP, they come home, they get drunk, they go to their bed, and they're up in the morning for the next one. Like with the local guys, they've got things to do, kids, getting school trips. And of course they're putting more money back into the community because they're doing Aye, things well, in the they're, town, well, in the they're actually living here, so the money was all getting recirculated back into the Grangemouth economy again, but now their guys are just taking the money and away home. 
This is a park I come to because uh, of my, my son's nursery and I've got the shops just round there, so we walk through here quite a lot. Grangemouth is green, Grangemouth is really, right. really green. But then you've got that, so no matter how green they make it, it's never ever going to be... No, they can't hide it. They can't hide it, yeah. it's just them. And it's face. getting, as I said about this, that new stack that I can see from my house now, it's getting bigger and bigger all the time. The BP's grown into us. Yeah. They'll know like us, they'll know that like build houses, but the BP's allowed to grow into the town. And it's not fair. It's, it's not fair. It's too, they, they should never have built houses near the, the BP. It should never, I mean, you shouldn't have houses this, no, this no. near. But then, that's a new plant. These are new plants. These are all new. Well, here we are. Going home. And the refinery, the BP refinery, is one of the biggest in Europe. And as you can see, this is a public road, which actually passes right through the middle of the BP, just about which, when you think about it, it's kind of unbelievable. Uh, I mean, this is... This is where people travel back and forward every day. And look what you're passing through. Well, that's us finished for the day. We're back, back in Carol's house. Um, we spent the day looking around Grangemouth after looking at a film where they had a Brazilian community affected by the carbon credits from the World Bank where heavy corporate industries pay to allow them to pollute or go above the pollution levels they pay for these carbon credits and cause just as much hassle over there. Well, I'd just like to say I hope you enjoyed the weird and wonderful world of the people of Grangemouth. Uh, and going about and meeting family and friends and uh, just generally seeing around Grangemouth. I hope you enjoy it. I enjoyed watching your film. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you and goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Hoje eu tive o privilégio né, de assistir a, a filmagem do documentário lá na Escócia e fiquei muito feliz de saber que o povo de lá solidariza com a gente aqui e da mesma forma, a gente, humildemente, a gente se solidariza lá também porque pode não parecer, mas o problema de lá é muito mais sério do que o nosso porque lá está da forma que eles falaram que e problemas de respiratórios e lógico cada lugar é um problema e a gente gostaria de dizer que a gente solidariza e que a gente fica muito feliz de poder ter realmente esse contato e não diferente depois do documentário é, muitas coisas aconteceram como as ameaças que que eu sofri que foram oito as ameaças que eu que eu sofri é, foram oito telefonemas não foram as mesmas pessoas que ligaram tinha dia que era homem tinha dia que era mulher e eu fiquei com muito medo porque o penúltimo telefonema é, falou da minha irmã que se fosse ameaçando só a minha pessoa tudo bem só que o penúltimo telefonema estava é, ameaçando a minha irmã a minha irmã mora em Belo Horizonte ela é dentista, ela e o marido, e eles, ela, a pessoa falou que ia marcar uma consulta com eles, deu o endereço onde eles moravam, deu o endereço onde eles trabalhavam, e com isso, eu não sei, igual eu falei que eu não sei quem me ameaçou, foi uma, denúncia, foi uma ameaça anônima, mas eu estou mexendo com a prefeitura, eu estou mexendo com a Câmara Municipal, estou mexendo com todo mundo, todo mundo pode. It was sad to hear when we got feedback from Brazil that they saw our situation as being very bad when when what, the reason that we're, we became so passionate about the Brazil eh, videos was because their experience was was dreadful and, and shouldn't be happening. We've seen what what they're, they're having to deal with and, and both about if you speak out the, the pressure was they were under I haven't been under any pressure about speaking out if they can speak out when they're under that amount of pressure there's nothing stopping me from speaking out o que me fez diminuir as minhas ações é que infelizmente a empresa 
dê um jeito de pressionar mais as pessoas que é, as pessoas que participaram do documentário agora diretamente oferecendo é, financiamento a projetos nas próprias terras como o Carlão e o Jota o Carlão o filho logo após o filho passou a trabalhar na empresa e foi convidado para participar aqui hoje mas não veio o Jota também o seu Dodô é o seguinte, ele, infelizmente, ele tinha duas nascentes no fundo das terras dele e, por causa do plantio próximo, devido ao plantio próximo, ele secou as duas nascentes. E continua, desde a época do, do, do documentário, a situação é a mesma, não mudou nada. Reprimi as nossas ações e, infelizmente, eu estou sozinha. The solution to cutting emissions is cutting emissions and trading emissions isn't going to be a, a, a quick fix to anything. So the quick fixes are people need to reduce their carbon use and people that are emitting need to be punished for doing so. I think through showing the film we've been very quickly able to talk to people about carbon trading eh, rather than a, a big concept. We've been able to say you can look out your window and you can see pollution. And what we're being told is these companies are, are looking after that pollution by trading with Brazil. Eh, and, and what we've been able to show is if you looked out the Brazilians' windows, this is what you would see as well, and it doesn't add up. Sem polícia, nem a milícia, nem feitiço, cadê? 
de poder Viva a preguiça, viva a malícia Que só a gente aqui sabe ter Assim dizendo a minha utopia Eu vou levar